Hey YouTube, Meep Magnet here. Welcome to episode 20 of our Feed the Beast Continuum. Uh, this is our quick tips and tricks and shit. Um, wanted to talk today about a little bit of a, a upgraded storage utility, I guess. Um, it's actually called Modular Storage. It's part of the RF Tools uh, set of mod packs. Um, you can see here I've got a, I've got some of this stuff set up. Um, if you look at better questing, let's take a look here. Modular storage. So I've already got some of this completed. So the modular storage itself, tier one storage module, um, remote storage, remote storage module, and then the storage scanner. Uh, part of this, this remote storage, the machine itself is pretty easy to put together. Um, the remote storage module, let's take a look at this. It's a little bit more difficult. Um, and we're looking at some ender pearls here. Um, right now, I don't have any of that stuff um, available. I, I did make the initial remote storage, um, the unit itself. I don't have the storage module connected. Right now, it doesn't seem like it's uh, that big of a deal because right now, most of my storage is consolidated. Um, we'll talk a little bit more about this. Uh, first, I wanted to go over this modular storage unit itself. The way this thing works, um, if you're familiar with AE2, it's it's kind of similar. Uh, the modular storage unit, uh, it, it's not all that expensive. Um, we're looking at just a machine frame. The, the highest cost here is going to be this advanced machine frame, I think. Um, advanced alloy plates and then some carbon plates. Pretty easily made, not a big deal. And then just to complete out this machine frame is just going to be some iron gold nuggets and some lapis. But otherwise this is relatively easy to make. Um, and it works pretty damn well. Let's take a look at RF tools here. Um, you're going to see that in order to make these work you need some storage modules. So tier one is pretty easy to make. They're not complicated. Um, you can see here this is just a chest or a box. Uh, a couple gold nuggets, uh, iron, some nether quartz, and some redstone. But keep in mind you're going to need these. So if you shift on these guys, uh, this first one is good for 100 stacks. So this thing functions like a chest. So if you're familiar with AE2, it doesn't stack things the way you typically would think of. This runs more on a chest style of organization. So... 100 stacks for the first tier, 200 for the second, and 3 for the third. Um, and right now I can kind of show you this. If I would have known this was as easy to make as it was, I would have done this earlier just because of the way it works. So let's take a look at this modular storage. So I've got a tier 2 card in here. And right now I've got 99 out of 200 stacks occupied. But you can see I put all kinds of shit in here. All kinds of stuff, stuff like my immersive engineering, just random raw materials, and this works really well. Off to the left side here, you see a crafting grid. So this is pretty cool. You can go through here um, and just kind of put stuff together. You know, this just kind of functions as a um, kind of like a, an empty storage unit so you can keep the recipe here and then just craft them as you need the materials so you've got the option for one four eight and then a stack and the recipe as shown shows up here so that works out pretty well um one of the other cool features that i kind of like about this is if we uh dump that in there let's put that back um the way this works is that if you hit it it automatically goes into your inventory, so you don't have to worry about digging through all the rest of this shit. Um, and then that's, you know, pretty much a done deal. So let's get, a, get rid of that. Um, so keep in mind, this is a two, uh, tier two, so 200 stacks. And that's kind of how this shit functions. You can see here, I've got black concrete and then black concrete. So this is a full stack and then a partial, so it occupies two. But it will fill it up. You don't have to worry about any of that stuff. Uh, that's pretty pretty easy to take care of. Now you'll notice here that, <clears throat> excuse me, you'll see I've got 29 and 8 here. So the way this works is since it is chest style, we could actually chop this in half and set another one in here. So this is occupying three stacks. You can see 100 out of 200. 
So what we could do is consolidate these. This Z here, this compact equal stacks, we'll drop this down. So we've gone from 100 to 97. We've combined some gunpowder, and then there's some other stuff that must have been in here that um, we no longer have to worry about. So the one thing that kind of pisses me off about this is that the mouse wheel doesn't work. Um, so you have to kind of do the business here. Um, but really, the way to do this is to use the search function. So let's say we're looking for iron. It brings up everything with the word iron in it. And that's that, that's awesome because the way these inventories work is that the larger they get, the harder it is to find shit. Even if it is sorted A to Z, and you can change this, um, it's easy just to type shit in and it'll pull it up. So let's take a look at this. So the items are shown in columns. You can set this just to icons or you can set it to list view. So this just lists all pretty much everything. It takes up a little bit more space. So I like to have this in column view just because it condenses a little bit more and works well. And then sort it A to Z. You could sort it number of actual um, items here if you were tracking how much cobblestone you have. Um, you have that ability. Um, and then this don't show groups. Um, I haven't really seen what what the hell this does. Um, if anybody in the comments wants to post that, I guess right now I don't really see what that's for. So, um, but that's there. So if you figure out what that is, uh, yeah, let me know. <laughs> I'll be doing a little more uh, experimenting with the shit, but. Um, that'll have to be uh, a little bit later on. So let's look at this next part. So we've got our first modular storage. I used this for a while, probably a few hours, and then decided, eh, let's see what the rest of this is, and then came up with this. So we've got a storage scanner. Let's look at this bad boy. Um, and because that list is so ugly, and if I could fucking type storage scanner. Okay. So this is where things get a little bit hairy, I guess. Inner pearls aren't easy to come by. Now, the way to circumvent that a little bit is to, well, set up a mob spawner, which I don't like doing because I don't like setting shit up because shit just breaks sometimes, and then I end up getting pissed off. I try not to make mob spawners without using machines just because that's how I operate. I don't know. I've never liked doing it. If you want to spend the time doing that, go for it. I prefer to spend my time elsewhere. Um, I'm not saying that's right or wrong. Do whatever is comfortable for you. This is your game. Play it. Do your thing. The method that I use for gathering these ender pearls is upgrading a sword. So on this Manilium broadsword, I've got some shit on here. So cold-blooded, insatiable, sharper, mending moss, and then I put luck three on here. So Smacking a few Endermen around with this thing with looting three on it has yielded enough Ender Pearls to make these machines. Um, it maybe took three night cycles to figure it all out. Um, it wasn't hard. I picked these up relatively fast. Um, if you don't have looting three on a sword, um, get it done because you can use that for collecting blaze rods too before you actually have a spawner. So keep that in mind that's there. Luck three, spend the lapis on it, and just do it up. So. So that's the storage scanner. Let's take a look at how this bad boy works. Now, you, you see the, the UI is relatively the same. Um, you're going to see that there are some additions, though. So your crafting thing exists. It's all the same. Let's turn, change this to 1 and scan. OK. So let's take a look at what is going on here. And let's change our view. Wide storage, that's all we get out of there. Huh? Okay, that's fine. So the way this works is this machine takes RF. Now, that's not a big deal because it's got a pretty good buffer in there, so 50,000 RF. But it seems like every transaction, no matter what it is, right now we're at 248. Let's take out this stack. Let's take out a single, actually. So shift and click will bring a single item out of here, and this is 248. So let's take a single out. We're down to 238. So it seems like a whole stack pulls about 200. So we're at 238. Full stack. Well, that wasn't it. Let's, let's do this again. So we've got 108. Let's pull the full stack. And it's down. That was 100. For that whole stack of gold, that was 100 RF it took out of there. And to put it back in, 
Yeah, you're looking at about 10, 20. So the use on here, it's pretty low. Um, I think you can pull a lot of shit in and out of this thing by just filling up this buffer. I use that clockwork engine just to fill this up and test it, but it worked pretty well. So, um, so just keep that in mind. Um, you could shift click into here, it'll go in and then it'll just go back in with the rest of this stuff. Um, so let's take a look at the rest of this. So we've got a scan, our radius of scan. Right now it's set to one, which makes sense. So in one block around this thing, We've got a modular storage controller, well, a modular storage block, and then a remote storage, which we can see here. Both are there. I'm going to change this to routable so that when I do set this up, we're able to pull from it. Um, and you can kind of direct stuff around. So you can see here that this all routable inventories, it's set with a star. Um, but this is going to pull up every inventory with a star on it. So let's change this. I'm going to change this to, let's see if three will pick this up. So now we've got a few more things here. This oak chest is not going to be relevant because that's attached here. I use that as a vacuum. I just throw shit in there and it pumps it into the table. I'll show you that in a minute here. We've got some auto chisel stuff and we can see that there's 448 blocks in there. Now, the way this works is if we look, this is going to be cobblestone, big tile. Let's search cobblestone. And we can see that all routable doesn't have anything in there. But since we type this in in search, it, this kind of went like a yellow piss color. And we can see that, yep, there is a whole shitload of that in there. So why is this cool? Well, let's change this over to a, a routable. And let's check it this way. Now you see when I clicked on all routable, see how it's picking this up now? You can do the same for these crafting uh, tables. It's pretty much everything with an inventory. Now I've got this cranked up to 20. And the reason I did that is because you see this giant wall of drawers over there? Let's go into our storage scanner here. You can see that most of my redstone is stored up there. And I've also got, um, there's a lot of cobblestone sitting in here too. Especially in this compacting drawer. Let's take a look. Let's type in cobblestone. You can see that there is 21,273 sitting there. So this son of a bitch and thing at, at 20, at a radius of 20, is picking up all of my storage drawers. It's also picking up some other random stuff like uh, stencil tables, this tool station, other chests. There's even smeltery controller if there were items inside there. Um, this coke oven's kind of cool. I'm not sure if this actually, I don't think you can pull out of these inventories, but it counts as one. Um, you can see the squeezers there. What other stuff is in here? The carpenter. Can't pull anything out of the carpenter, it seems. Same with this. It looks like it might be output only. Um, so some of this you're going to have to ignore. Let's take a look here. Oh, it is. it does show in there. Sorry, I had the search function going, but take a look. Yeah, you can pull this stuff out of here. Thermionic fabricator. So you can pull this stuff out of here. Sorry, I had the search function uh, set up on there. But yeah, you're able to pull all this stuff out. Just at the cost of a, a kind of a minimal amount of RF there. Because it doesn't look like it, it uses anything unless you're actually moving it. I keep this set on all routable. That way I've got access to pretty much everything here. Except I, I set this as a larger storage list, so I've got access to most of this. So you can see the ginormous numbers are here. Works pretty well. Um, but that's there. So the crafting function kind of works the same as well. Um, you can move this stuff up or down, depending on how you want to organize it. Um, and, and that works pretty well. You can remove inventories from the list, but it seems like once you do a scan, that's what shows up in there. So this is a pretty awesome device. If you haven't set this up, do so. Um, you'll like it. Even if you're still using the tables, say, down here to do your crafting, um, if you wanted to just pull out a set stack of, say, copper, that's all it is. No big deal. Um, most of these, I think they return to where they came from. Oh, I take that back. I think you have to set the filters for this. I'll do that later. 
I'd like to get away from all of this stupid shit here anyway. I want to get rid of these chests and kind of reorganize. Um, and I think this couple more modular storage units, I think I'm going to set them up and do that that way. So if you haven't set this up, do so. Get it done. Uh, I know you want to do it. This remote storage. Uh, I wouldn't worry so much about that yet unless you're really trying to get through the better questing stuff. Um, just because some of that stuff later on, it looks like there's dimensional storage so you can access it across dimensions. Um, I haven't got there yet. I got some other stuff I need to take care of in the meantime. So stay tuned to the next few episodes. I'm going to go over some more immersive engineering machines. And then um, there's a diesel generator that outputs uh, 1,024 RF per tick at the expense of ethanol and plant oil. So going to go over that in the next few episodes. We're going to get some power generation stuff going on here again. Um, rather than just the passive stuff. So stay tuned. Until next time.